Okay, hello everyone. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE on theCUBE. We are here in Palo Alto for a special CUBE conversation with Noam Shendar, the CEO of Zadar Storage, who stopped in to share with us his perspective on his company, his success, unique technology, and uh, we are here to talk about what's going on in the industry, what's the trend. Extract that signal from the noise and share with you. Noam, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Thanks, John. So, um, you guys have been very successful. We've talked, um, you've, you've been briefing the analysts. Obviously, we had a segment on, on your company's value proposition on the CUBE conversation. Um, but the cloud is hot. And there's so much going on in the industry right now between the shift and the inflection point, which is rare in the technology business to be actually in the water, so to speak, as these waves are of innovation and, and wealth creation mm -hmm. and customer value is all happening at the same time. It's very rare, so it's fun to have you here. And I want to ask you, cloud, okay? Go back five years, I mean, the cloud is just too risky. Roach Motel, once you get in, you can't get out. Mm -hmm. um, but the economics are just undeniably amazing. Yes. You can save on labor costs, buy as you go. A little bit unorthodox initially, but now it's mainstream. Five years now, at Amazon reInvent, it was clear the enterprise is clearly in the cloud with shadow IT, so the application side. Businesses have grown like Splunk, ServiceNow, you name the list and list of companies that have won by land and expanding, Tableau, software and big data, you name it. That's the, the future. Yes. That's a done deal. But the infrastructure is interesting. Not everyone's winning. There's been some dead bodies in the storage business. Nirvonix, uh, uh, Box.net or Box.com has gone public. We see their numbers. They're not doing well in the enterprise. I mean, they're shadow IT oriented, mm -hmm. more collaboration. What's going on? How are you guys so successful? And why is the cloud enterprise game so on fire right now from an opportunity standpoint? And what are the challenges? The the reason cloud is successful and the reason it's so exciting uh, to watch is unlike previous disruptions, it's both a technological and a business model disruption. And the business model disruptions are the more permanent, lasting, and, and damaging to the status quo. So this is why we're all riveted by this because this is, yeah. this is uh, both a success story but also a train wreck, as you mentioned, for some. The, um, for, those who, right, for those who are not catching this, this wave, the the reason of the the reason that t if we look today versus five years ago that it's so uh, it's become mainstream whereas before five years ago there was a lot of skepticism is both for objective reasons and subjective so there there was a fear factor that was purely subjective five years ago and that has dissipated because the track record speaks for itself but there are also things missing in the cloud that kept enterprise customers out. Enterprise customers are... Like what, was it just flash? We're seeing flash, all flash arrays on the hardware side really dominate. That's just come out of nowhere in the past three years. It, it's, not just, it's not just storage. So st part of storage was well the performance wasn't there, the, um, yeah, the, abil the availability of flash tier. So neither Amazon nor Microsoft Azure had a flash tier at the time, and, and they both do now, one in production, one as a beta. Uh, so it, Kudos to them for listening to the customers and deploying quickly. By the way, that's one of the beautiful things about cloud. The innovation pace is much faster. So the, if you look at, at Amazon's rate of new product introduction, it's, it, it, your head spins when you look at it. We're talking about every week there's a new product deployed. And then Microsoft Azure. By the way, that was Facebook's motto as well, just keep innovating and just release, release, yes. release. And, ship, and, and, ship, and, decoup ship. and decouple. Get the product out. Don't worry about dependencies within the rest of the company. Those will come. So, so it's like, <laughs> like, like yeah. uh, line up later. Release first and line up later. So it's, it's really amazing. And then Microsoft Azure is another great yeah. story because they weren't in the rear view mirror even yeah. of, of AWS just a few years ago. Now they're flashing their brights at, yeah. at AWS saying, get out of the way, I'm But passing. this is not just a technical thing. It's also every industry. For instance, I was commenting on the demise of our commerce at GigaOM that went under, yes. closed their doors, and their business model just wasn't working. Their content was great. Um, our content, we model the, the Amazon model, keep shipping content, you yes. know, in all formats and you know, video, whatever. But it's just every market's now becoming connected. When you have connected business models, the cloud is the natural place. Don't yep. you agree? So, so it could be a Tableau, it could be a business model innovation, and a technology. So they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. You no, can no. have business model innovation with no tech, you or tech, and then enabling someone to do business or do both. Exactly. And, uh, and the uh, powerful ones, both, right? Exactly. You can do, you can so do both, it's a perfect storm. There's a, there exactly, there's a multiplier effect. And this, this is what we're seeing uh, with, with our own business, is doing two, both at the same time creates, creates a way to sell that is yeah. almost, o almost 
competition proof when you think of the incumbents as competition. Not saying that somebody else couldn't come out and do, do something akin to what we're doing, but in terms of the existing companies, th there's too much to change. Th if they have to change both the technology and the business model, it's almost too high a barrier. And what's interesting, I want to get your perspective on is, is what is the future? Because I was talking about this at the Open Compute Summit we just did a live stream on, and, and with open source, the computer science approach for coders is more software oriented, is more Lego block engineering versus hardcore coding, which you have to build your own libraries. So now you're more of a chef in terms of you're putting pieces together in recipes. That's the new skill set. So cloud also enables that. S and so you guys have done something with the technology. So I want you to talk about that dynamic, because you're doing both things, which is hard to do. Yes. You're doing an operational uh, business model and you have technology innovation. What is under the foundation of your business that would be the enabler for that? I mean, you guys are doing something really hard, but what was the foundation? What got you to that point? The, it, it came from that realization of two things. One is that storage is, is ripe for a disruption because it's so difficult to purchase and that cloud is the answer to, to those problems in that until we came along, those two were a Venn diagram of two circles that didn't intersect. But you did cloud first. Your decision was, let's go cloud first, hence the Amazon yes. relationship. The reason we did cloud first for, for two reasons. One is, the on-premises market was much more crowded. Still is much more crowded. There, yeah. there are it's hundreds. highly competitive and cost intensive too, capital Correct. intensive. We're, whereas in cloud, if we, if we go into an Amazon environment and we provide premium storage, we're the only provider of premium storage. And by the way, our we're being compared to very basic storage. We mentioned earlier the, the, the early on cloud was not very enterprise ready, didn't have an SSD tier. Well, from day one we had an SSD tier at AWS. So what that meant is if you compared us to very basic services from AWS, Azure and others, it was, it was a no-brainer. By the way, we're premium product, more expensive, so we never competed with our partners at Amazon and Azure. If their basic services were good enough, the customer picked them, but if they weren't good enough, then the customer was willing to pay extra to go with our option. So, so that's why we started with cloud. It was a very clear need and a very easy for us to differentiate ourselves. And then we used that time in the cloud to do two things. Harden the product, just like the cloud providers do, and keep releasing new features. We hardened it, we added features, we made it far more far more complete from an enterprise perspective. And then we said, hey, enterprise customer, would you like the same on-premises? You already like the features at Amazon. How would you like the same business model with private storage? And that's, that's when the floodgates opened. Yeah, so you guys had that vector in, and some people go the other way and try to do kind of uh, kind of a halfway, stuck in the middle strategy. Mm -hmm. um, what was the biggest learning that you was that was magnified in your success? You know, you guys have an interesting model. You've been kind of, you know, growing along, getting, mm -hmm. getting all of a sudden, boom, the growth hits in. Mm -hmm. What was that process like, and and what was the learnings that were magnified out of that? The we learned so much about the as a service business model. We're all enterprise storage people. Our history is in is in building boxes and selling them for an upfront price and mm -hmm. like everybody else does. So it, this, this market was new to us as well. And we learned very quickly that it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's a powerful business model the customers love and adopt very quickly. On the other hand, and, and by the way, from a financial perspective, it's recurrent. So the sale that I closed today continues to pay for a while, so any sale that I work on tomorrow is simply additive to that first sale. That's the good news. So, so you work a lot, but that, that revenue curve is exponential because you're just building on your past revenue. The bad news is customers can leave, right? Easy in is also easy out. So we have to earn that recurring revenue every single day. So what's the argument that you can answer to when someone says, hey, you know what, you're just not as big as EMC, or NetApp, um, I'm not sure you're going to be a around in business. What if you go under? Nirvana's went under. What do you what do you say to that? Uh, we say a number of things. First of all, we have uh, a lot of funding, and we're and we're not using a lot of it, so we're we're doing well enough. You're profitable. We are we we can't yet announce profitability, <laughs> but but we are but we are we definitely can say we have a very slow burn rate. Uh, which you gives have money in the bank. We have a lot you of have money. Plenty of runway. Correct. So you Co give customers yes. that confidence. Correct. The second thing we can say is we have a very consistent backer in Toshiba, our largest investor, not our only investor, but they're our largest investor is Toshiba out of Japan, a very long-term thinker, has been with us with two consecutive rounds already, 
they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And, and those customers who want... And they already got the cash in, so you already got the cash. We already got the cash. So yeah. the, what we tell customers, and don't, don't take our word for it, call, yeah. call our Toshiba board member in Tokyo and ask him. And have him tell you what level of commitment he has to the company. And, and then the last is, and this is one of, the, one of those things where the technology really helps, is our, our technology does not share drives, be they SSDs or spindles, among customers. So John's drives are separate from Noam's drives, which means should you ever want to leave, let's say you worry that we may not be around, you can take your drives. You have, you have to buy them, but they're yours. And it doesn't affect any other customer. You mentioned yeah. a, a previous disaster, a company that went out of business. The, the problem there was all the data was commingled, so every customer had to copy the data. That was out. a nightmare, too, because when they went out of business, I think one of the studios, I think it was Fox or one of the big studios, literally got caught um, big time and had a huge problem. Could getting the data back. Exactly. They had like two week window to get it back. Exactly. <laughs> That's a huge issue. It was so in, in our ca in our case, there's there's no issue. You so you have an, no SLA issues at all. You basically have a clean SLA yes. um, service level agreement. You have a way for them to get their drives back if there's something happens. Mm -hmm. If they're unhappy of any kind. Correct. Okay. So about the big picture. W if I'm a customer. I got a lot of things in my mind. I'm, I might not be thinking about storage all the time. I'm thinking about facilities, power and cooling. I got a lot of things I want off my plate. Mm -hmm. Storage costs is one of them, CapEx. So you have an OpEx, that's an interesting st conversation starter. Yes. But I got a lot of other things going on. So how do you, uh, how are you relevant in that conversation when you step up to the table with the CIO, mm -hmm. or CFO, or C-level mm -hmm. person? What's the, give us the take on, what's the vibe, what's the conversation? Hey, I save your life with storage, or what's, I mean, come on, what's, what's the story? It's, it's actually a very good conversation because we appeal to their desire to be the hero, the caped crusader, so to speak. They have, for so many years, been in a position of being the naysayer. I, hey, CEO, I know what you need, but I can't deliver it to you. You didn't forecast it in advance, so th it'll take me time to deliver on what you need. I want to help you, I'm on your team, but because of my CapEx restrictions, because I have to depreciate all the hardware, because of budgets, I can't turn on a dime. And when the conversation we have is, hey, you could be the hero. You can go to your CEO and say, yes, I can, by tomorrow. And that, that opens their eyes. Yeah, you know, one of the things, I, Dave Vellante and I always talk about this because you know, we're big fans of EMC um, and love their sales-focused, customer-centric uh, mentality. Um, but at the end of the day, storage has always been kind of a corner case of get the business relationship, you have the customer account, and you, know, you, work, <laughs> you work the sales motions on that. But now it's becoming such a central conversation because one, storage isn't going away. Right. Uh, two, it's getting faster, lower latency, and all the business value is shifting to things like business model interfaces from in-memory analytics, mm -hmm. so you're seeing flash. So what's happening is, that is storage is becoming as central to the C-level mm -hmm. conversation as the power and cooling conversation, because that's yes. direct hard money. Yes. Right. So now you have direct top-line impact with storage, mm -hmm. and it's growing like crazy. Yeah. So that we see storage doing that, so that means the EMC's got to shift the conversation mm -hmm. to Oh yeah, we got all your stuff taken care of. Here's a discount. Always keeping the customer to if they're not pushing the envelope on the capex issue mm -hmm. and the business value. Right. Is that where you're winning? Yeah. And is that the key conversation? Yeah. The, the the conversation is around it's around agility. It's around the capex. It's around the opex, and it's about how the business can support the corporate goals, both the forecasted one and the the unforeseeable ones. And, and the unforeseeable ones is what keeps the CIO out, up at night. The CEO or CFO comes to them tomorrow morning and says, either we have a new initiative and we need to deploy it, we've, we have uh, three months to deploy it or else we sink. Or we've hit hard times, we need to tighten the belts, your, your budget is now 10% smaller than you thought it was going to be. In the traditional model, you've already bought the hardware it's your CapEx, you're depreciating it, so you can't save any money there. That's already locked in. So guess where you're gonna save? You're gonna lay off people to get to your 10% goal. With us, that is not the case. Re delete or archive what you don't need, reduce your usage of the storage, and your monthly bill goes down immediately. You can be the hero, and you don't have to lay anybody off. By the way, laying people off is self-defeating, because now you can do even less. Yeah, I always say people are gonna be reshifted, and even the DB, 
the, uh, the DBA is a storage role, it's an Oracle database kind of model. That's going to shift to more data science. You mentioned some of those titles. Um, so that's a trend that we see. So it's more mm -hmm. of a redistribution of the where the value shifts. Yes. That being said, how does a startup like you guys are in general a startup out there watching? Mm -hmm. How do you compete with the big whales? I mean, because the market, when the money hits the table, mm -hmm. customers going to go with mm -hmm. the, the safe bet. Right. How do you guys and how should startups compete in this cloud game where you can be nimble, you can be a revolutionary, you can be mm -hmm. uh, aggressive. Yes. And still win the game. So how do you guys? What's your What's your general advice? In one is e the unique value proposition. It's it's unbeatable. If the customer wants storage on premises as a service, then we're we're their answer. And the traditional vendors are not. And we're seeing this in RFPs now. So we're getting RFPs from some of the largest companies on the planet, and they're using our language in the RFPs because that's what they want. That's that's their dream come true in terms of an IT experience. So that's one. Two is it's the service business model inspires confidence in the customer because they know, unlike the traditional model, if we don't do our job, we don't get paid, right? So the, the traditional vendors, they get paid up front, even if the experience is terrible after that. We stop getting our money if we don't keep the customer happy every single day. So the customers get that. So in the, and they, the way they talk to us is like a partner, not like a vendor, but like somebody who will be with them for the long term. And that's another very, very significant advantage versus the competition. And then th the last piece is the track record. The reason we started at AWS is because we could, and we didn't need to convince anyone. We could place our storage next to AWS, use AWS Direct Connect, and also we do the same with Azure, with ExpressRoute, and begin offering our service, and then establish a multi-year track record of reliability. So I got to ask you a final question on this one is, what's the difference between OpenStack and AWS, and what should people know about Amazon Web Services that have been so amazing. Why is it so successful? And what could the OpenStax and these other communities learn from AWS? AWS is amazingly customer focused. Uh, and as, as we mentioned, very, very nimble. They're able to release products very quickly, but it's, that's not good enough by itself if what they're releasing is not relevant to the customer. But they, they listen to their customers and they, they move as quickly as they can to address those needs. And we have seen this, when, when we were a tiny, tiny customer, AWS was releasing features that were based on our requests because it made market sense to them. And it, we, ever since, we've been amazed by their ability to listen and then execute. And they don't hype up, they do listen to the customer, they move fast, they ship a lot of code, and they're nimble. I mean, mm -hmm. they're unorthodox by today's standards, but they're going to do right. massive revenue. Right. But, do, but don't, don't forget and don't underestimate Azure. So AW, AWS is, is now uh, at risk of being lapped by Azure. So Why do you say that? Uh, you f first, you see a number of reports coming out uh, regarding the revenue that Azure is generating, and it's it's getting into the same order of magnitude as AWS, and it's growing much more quickly. My guess for why Azure is so successful, in addition to the technology, is the customer base. So the enterprise customer base, they're Microsoft customers already. So Microsoft can tap their existing clientele for Azure, whereas AWS has to add them one by one. Yeah, yeah, they have a huge green field on Amazon, but install base at Azure is huge. What about Google Cloud? I mean, you know, and VMware. Is VMware going to be left out in the cold? I mean, certainly there's a three horse race going on mm -hmm. now, Amazon, Azure, Google. Mm -hmm. Where does VMware play into all this? So VMware's the other company that already has the enterprise clientele, and, it, and cloud is a must for them, because they have everything to lose, right? If everybody migrates to AWS, that's lost revenue for, for VMware. So they recently announced a Google collaboration, I think it's very smart because that's those are the two after the first two players and rather than fighting each other. And Google has no presence in the enterprise. That's right. So and yeah. they have huge developer traction. Correct. Interesting. Yeah, you kind of were <laughs> reading the tea leaves, <laughs> Cube Conversation. No, I appreciate coming on uh, here for this Cube Conversation and adding some content, sharing it out there. Really appreciate it. Great My to pleasure. see you. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. Noam uh, Shendar, CEO of Zadara Software. Watch those guys. Zadara Software, software as a service, or storage as a service, taking the software as a service trend, making it storage. Um, you call it uh, um, uh, pass. Um, what do you call it? O yeah. Uh, Opus. Opus, but not on platform as a service. On premises as a service. On premise as a service, not to be confused with platform as a service, but congratulations. Thank you. This is theCUBE, Conversation in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.